I wanted to talk to you about was, I noticed something in, in, in your paintings when you were talking about, you know, a football conflict, the, the accident. You know, there seems to be a through line of, of, of catastrophe. Uh, well, putting it in very, very simple terms is that I'm attracted to that not because of it being a catastrophe, but the formal arrangement that occurs when two cars crashes okay. is much more interesting than two cars parked together on the curb because it creates a plastic, uh, it creates a visual right, sure. uh, excitement. Okay. Okay. So I don't really have any specific connection to catastrophes, like okay. as if I enjoy a catastrophe in of itself. Right. Because it doesn't, all that matters to me is what makes a painting. Okay, let, me, let me put it a different way then, because I'm, I'm trying to see if, if, if my, if my perception is way off or not. It seems to be a through line of some sort of, not violence, but some, some, sort, no. of, some sort of, you know, yeah. collu you know uh, yeah. collide, collusion. Yeah. Um, it's funny and, and is because... That, is, uh, is that cathartic? Is that... Well, the writer, I don't know if you read or even got that book, um, Liebenstein, his name is, he wrote a book on my work. Well, it's also a biography, and he he's an art critic and a historian and a, one of the <coughs> most intelligent people, the person that I ever met. And he's been following my work for about 30 years. Uh, he's French, he lives in Paris. And he claims also to see this kind of under, unli, underlying kind of violence, you know, even in the, because uh, I was going to bring this up with you just now and say, well, what about the super realist period where mm -hmm. those uh, liners were in a smooth ocean, there wasn't a wind, there was not a wave out of place, and he thought that somehow behind it there was a seething something. Storm. Yeah. And, in fact, uh, metaphysically speaking, there was a storm later on when I felt displaced okay. out of the uh, super realist, photo realist. Because at the end of the year, there were a hundred painters doing it. Right. And I thought that it was something that had been taken away from me. Okay. I don't have any uh, conscious... Uh, feeling that uh, when I'm painting, uh, you know, a car crash, about the car crash idea itself, what I'm looking at is one tone against another tone. Sure. Against another tone. You know, the very practical aspect of doing it. And the feeling, uh, whatever that is, comes in without me participating in it. There's a, why don't you get that chair over there? And then you can be higher than us, which would be so thrilling. And put you on a pedestal. You like that, don't you? There's a great story about uh, uh, Malamé and Degas. Malamé was uh, a 19th century symbolist poet. And uh, they were great pals, Degas and Malamé. And after 20 years, Degas once said to Malamé, he said, you know, Malamé, I also write poetry. And I've been writing poetry for 20 years, as long as we've known each other. And uh, I have a devil of a time uh, expressing my feelings. Would you mind reading them? So Malamé read them and... Uh, when they got back together, he said to him, you know, Degas, poetry is not made with feelings, it's made with words. The painting is made with pain. That's right. Not with these liter literary interpretations that people 
see things in terms of, right. you know, from a literary point of view. But you can... Um, but I can't deny that there's a very strong um, it, it, but if, subject if, matter. If there's a common theme or common action, right? And, and the common action seems to travel from painting to painting then one could deduce that, intentional or not, it can be present. Yes. Well, if, uh, if an artist is in the world, so to speak, linked, uh, and uh, is connected to what's going on, then some of that would surely be reflected in what he does. Although that argument can be uh, destroyed because you can point to artists such as uh, uh, Bryce Marden. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know his I work, do. which is completely abstract, right, and incredibly beautiful, and it's sort of a beauty thing in and of itself, and it does all the things that, for me, a painting should do. Yet Bryce will paint one of those abstract paintings. Uh, mourning for the death of a friend. But he doesn't need to paint a literal uh, figurative painting. Right. He paints this completely abstract painting and he'll call it okay. the mourning of a friend, you know. Are you familiar with Barnett Newman? Yes. He's a major, big, big major uh, painter from the uh, 50s and 60s and 70s actually. Uh, he painted these huge, giant paintings with one color and with a stripe down one end. And he would call that, I, I got to know him, he became a mentor for me. And he was very involved with the idea of painting as if he was the first artist. Mm -hmm. So he had a whole shebang, you know, a whole philosophy, a whole thing that uh, went with it. And it was very, very grandiose. For example, somebody once said to him, well, you familiar with Malevich? He's a Russian constructivist. He invented something called suprematism. His famous painting in the, in the modern is a white square on a white ground. And that was painted over a hundred years ago. Anyway, so somebody said, well, uh, what about uh, uh, Malevich? And he drew himself up and he said, my dialogue is with Michelangelo. You know, he didn't fuck around. He just had this whole thing going. And he was painting pictures that the man in the street would say was rubbish. Right. You know? But the connoisseurs, thought that was one of the greatest statements that you could possibly make in painting. But often when an artist expands into a different genre of painting, it's hard, well, it's hard, he, it's hard. He to came out of a, a sort of a tradition okay. of a certain kind, iconic art. He was very, he's very Jewish. He was very involved with the synagogue, you know, and that's a very abstract kind of process of thinking. You know, they don't have cru uh, crucifixes and anything like that. Right. You know. So really, each artist can make up quite a wonderful story for themselves.